didn't work for me earlier. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day two of the Education Abroad Fair. This is your first fair, sh fair session. Welcome. If this is not your first session, welcome back. This morning, I'm going to talk to you about Education Abroad programs um, for students in the Warner College of Natural Resources. Um, I'll do some introductions shortly, um, but first, I did want to start off with the CSU Land Acknowledgement. Colorado State University acknowledges with respect that the land we are on today is the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute nations and peoples. This is also a site of trade, gathering, and healing for numerous other native tribes. We recognize the indigenous peoples as original stewards of this land and all the relatives within it. As these words of acknowledgement are spoken and heard, the ties nations have to their traditional homelands are renewed and reaffirmed. CSU is founded as a land-grant institution, and we accept that our mission must encompass access to education and inclusion. And significantly, that our founding came at a dire cost to Native nations and peoples whose land this university was built upon. This acknowledgement is the education and inclusion we must practice in recognizing our institutional history, responsibility, and commitment. All right, so my name is Drew Doty. I am an Education Abroad Coordinator in the Office of International Programs. I use he, him, his pronouns. I advise for programs regionally in Africa and the Middle East. I also work um, with our office's risk, risk management team and I help advise for some of our unaffiliated programs, which I'll explain what that means in a little bit. Like to, before I start talking about programs, um, I'd like to do a little bit of myth busting. Um, first thing, we hear a lot in our office that students think that in order to go abroad, they are going to have to delay their graduation. In fact, this should not be the case. Um, with good planning, going abroad should actually enhance your degree to help you graduate on time and in some cases you may even still be able to graduate early secondly there's a myth the education abroad team hears that um, going abroad is going to be more expensive than living here on csu in fort collins while there are certainly more expensive programs than being here at csu um, many of our programs are priced similarly to the cost of attendance here, and in many and in some cases, um, we do have programs that are actually less expensive. Third thing, we hear that we you may not be able to fulfill your coursework abroad. Totally not true. <laughs> All of our programs do offer academic credit. If you start planning early enough, talking with your academic advisor, as well as our team here in the Ed Abroad office, um, we should be able to help you find coursework related towards your major or electives that you may need towards graduation um, to keep you on track to graduate. Lastly, we do vet all of our programs. We have a risk management team um, that does support students. It has been a very busy time during the pandemic. Our international risk manager, constantly monitors and communicates some of the challenges and risks students might face while they're abroad. Um, by working together, we foster responsible and successful experiences for students all over the world. All right, so some of you may have checked out our website already. If you haven't, recommend you do so. Once you go to the Ed Abroad homepage, you can click on the Recommended Programs tab at the top. You can then select Warner College of Natural Resources, and it's going to bring you to this page where you're going to see each major that's available through the college. Here we have worked really closely with each department in your college to create a list of recommended programs around the world that are going to work really, where, really well for those majors. So you can find your major here, click on the recommended programs list, and you're going to see 
basically kind of a starting point of programs um, that we think are going to be a good fit for you academically. Um, don't worry if you don't find a program that you're really excited about on your recommended programs list. We have hundreds available um, that we can talk to you about. So come talk, come chat with us in an open advising appointment. I'll chat about when those times are later, um, but we're here to help you find a program that's going to be a perfect fit for you. The ideal program, we hope, is going to be a nice blend of your personal budget, your personal desires, where do you want to go, what do you want to experience while you're abroad, and it's going to be a good academic fit. I'm going to now go into a few examples of programs that have worked really well for students in the Warner College of Natural Resources in the past. Please keep in mind, these are just starting points. These are just examples. If none of them interest you, again, please come talk to us. First program I'd like to chat about is the Fish and Wildlife Conservation Biology in Todos Santos, Mexico. Um, this is actually on the CSU campus, campus in Todos Santos. Um, it is a semester-long program. Um, it'll be offered next in the spring of 2024. Um, we do have a short-term offering uh, along the same theme that go, uh, takes place over winter break. This is a, an example of a CSU faculty-led program, meaning you're taking CSU coursework while you're abroad. Um, it's led by CSU faculty members, so there's no transferring of credits. Um, the semester for this program specifically is going to focus on fish, wildlife, and conservation biology. Um, students are going to have the opportunity to work with and learn from local biologists, faculty, and students from ins institutions in Baja California, sir. Lectures, labs, and fieldwork will focus on topics related to theory, methods, and research techniques used to study fish and wildlife populations and the communities they, they inhabit. Place-based exper experiential learning opportunities through field excursions will allow students to explore and learn about marine, island, shore, and desert ecosystems. These are places CSU students seldom encounter here in Fort Collins, so it's a really unique opportunity if you're interested. The next program I'd like to talk about is Lincoln University. This is in um, just outside of Christchurch, New Zealand. Lincoln is an example of an exchange program. We have exchanges kind of all over the world. Um, this is one of our oldest partnerships in the Education Abroad Office. We've been working with them for over 20 years. Um, Lincoln is one of the eight government universities in New Zealand, country's specialist land-based university. So very similar to here at CSU. It's going to be great for students in Warner College of Natural Resources to find coursework um, in a variety of different disciplines. This is also great for students who may be studying agricultural studies as well. The university enjoys a rural setting about 25 minutes from Christchurch, which is the biggest city on the South Island of New Zealand. Outdoor activities are a major part of life here. Lincoln is perfect for students interested in hiking, backpacking, fly fishing, biking, boating, and more. There are national parks, fjords, rivers, coastal nature reserves, glaciers, rainforests, mountains, all these things to explore in the surrounding area. Lincoln is a particularly good fit for students in almost any major in the Warner College of Natural Resources. I wanna talk about one other exchange program through the University of Exeter. Um, this is in Cornwall, England, in the United Kingdom. University of Exeter is a top-ranked British university, member of the Russell Group in the UK, equivalent to kind of the Ivy Leagues here in the US. It's got a very strong international reputation for academics and research. The University of Exeter is noted as one of the most beautiful and botanically interesting of any UK university. Exeter is a fun college town of about 130,000, dating back to the Roman era. National parks, quaint villages, beaches are all easily accessible. 
Bristol, Bath, and other areas of interest are nearby. London is also easily accessible by train. Exeter is located on the southwest peninsula of England, an area known for its beaches and fish, fishing villages, which serves a population as a popular vacation destination. Again, going to be a great fit for most Warner College majors. So another um, so the example of an affiliate program, the School for Field Studies, SFS, in Tanzania, the program is on wildlife management. Um, very unique, a little bit different than an exchange program where you're based at a university. SFS is entirely field-based learning. So you're going to spend less time in a formal classroom setting, more time out in the field, getting hands-on experience, um, learning how to conduct and uh, design field research. Um, this is just one example of a program that SFS offers. They do have programming kind of all over the world through various different themes. Um, so if you're not interested in Tanzania, they do have programs elsewhere on and on different topics. Um, their model is kind of the same all over the world. So it's always going to be field-based learning. Um, one thing to keep in mind with SFS it is kind of a fixed curriculum, meaning you're not really going to choose the courses that you take with them. They have for every program, you're going to have four to five classes that are based on the theme of that program. Um, when you go to their website, you can see the syllabus for each class. So make sure you're talking with your academic advisor make sure that that program is going to work with you to stay on track to graduate. If you are interested in field based learning, these are kind of the best. <laughs> in our industry that you can choose from. All right, integrated social and ecological field methods in Kenya. This is an example of a CSU faculty led program. Um, this program takes place in Samburu, Kenya, which is kind of a region of Northern Kenya. It's a rich blend of ecology, culture, and expansive rangelands and mountains. It's also got some of the country's premier protected areas and wildlife. This is a summer, a short-term program that happens over the summer months. Um, this course fulfills the HDNR and ESS department requirement for NR220, Ecological and Natural Resource Measurements. Um, it is a five credit course. Through the course, students will be introduced to rangeland ecological monitoring techniques, social science research methods, in agrarian communities. Um, it does provide students with an in-depth understanding of natural resource management that's rarely accessible to most foreign visitors. And lastly, I want to talk about one other faculty-led program that does happen over the summer months, uh, some marine ecotourism in the Bahamas. For this program, you'll sail and snorkel the crystal clear waters of the Baha Bahamian Island, um, Students will explore key issues in sustainable development of marine ecotourism in the Exumas, Bahamas. The program will focus on coral reef ecology, conservation, and how Bahamian cultures interact with the sea, nature conservation, and tourism development. All right, so I told you all for all your programs, um, you should be earning credit towards your degree. If you're going abroad through our office. Um, if you are going with a program where you're going to have credits transferring in from another institution, we do have a formal process for making sure that those credits are going to transfer in in the way that you need them. This is called the transfer credit form. This is what it looks like. It will be a requirement in your application at some point um, during your pre-departure phase. Um, some students may choose to do this before they apply just to see if the courses that they want to take abroad are actually going to work um, before they actually submit an application and everything. It will be a requirement once you've been accepted to your program to do this. In short, you're going to write in the courses um, that you want to take abroad over in those uh, two left-hand columns. You'll download a syllabus for each class. This gets sent to the registrar. They're going to say, yes, this can get CSU credit, and they're going to say, uh, kind of what level the course will come in at. 
Then it gets sent to your academic advisor where they're going to sign off, letting you know exactly how it's gonna to work towards your major or your uh, AUCC requirements. As you're preparing to go abroad, there's kind of three main groups of people that you're gonna work with. You're gonna have your CSU Education Abroad Coordinator. That's someone like myself. Depending on where you're going in the world, you're gonna work with a different person in our office. When you're looking at your program website, you'll be able to see who the coordinator in our office is. So if you have questions about that program, you wanna reach out to that person. You're gonna work with your academic advisor or academic success coordinator, depending on which one you have, um, to help figure out the classes that you need to take while you're abroad and making sure the courses you want to take are going to work to keep you on track to graduate. And then lastly, you'll work with your program advisor or CSU faculty member or staff group leader. If you are a student who uses financial aid, um, I have great news that you can use majority of your financial aid to go abroad. Uh, we have two financial aid advisors in our office, Cindy Maris and Evelyn Martinez, who would be more than happy to meet with you. They can pull up your financial aid profile, let you know what of your package can be used to pay for your ed abroad program, what might not be able to, um, and they can also discuss any options that might be available to you to help fill in some gaps. We also have scholarships available through our office for education abroad programs. Um, we have made it really easy for you. There's just one application. It's called the Education Abroad Common Scholarship Application. There are two deadlines per year, one on April 1st and one on October 1st for applying. You can apply to either deadline as long as your program starts roughly within one year after that deadline. Um, so you can see here kind of the specific um, program dates to qualify for each deadline. Um, we've got over 30 different scholarships available through our office. You're not going to be eligible for all 30, but you might be eligible for two or three. Um, and we will review your application for every scholarship that you are eligible for. If you have gone abroad and you're super excited about your experience, um, you can continue. <laughs> Uh, in the field of Ed Abroad by coming and working for us. Right now, we've got seven peer advisors currently working in our office. These are students like you who may have been abroad, um, and we're so excited about it that they came to work for us. You can see here where each of them went. Um, these students work in our office each day of the week. Um, they may be the ones responding to you over email if you reach out to our general email inbox. They're also here, they have open advising hours. So if you don't wanna meet with a coordinator like myself, you can meet with a peer, um, someone a little bit more closely related in age to you um, to hear about what their experience was like while they were abroad. We do offer open advising hours um, to come meet with a coordinator as well. These are available on Tuesdays from 1 to 4 p.m., Wednesdays, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., and 1 to 4 p.m., and then Thursdays, again, from 9 a.m. to 12. Uh, we do have these QR codes, so if you're interested in coming to an open advising session, for more information, go ahead and scan those QR codes now. If you'd like to, you can join an open advising session either in person or online. So we have it available through Zoom, or you can come to our office. Our office is located in Laurel Hall, which is on the northeast side of the Oval. You can kind of see it in the map down there. If you're ready to go, you're ready to start working on uh, making going abroad a reality for yourself, um, you can scan this code. It's going to take you to our Start Here page, where you have real specific steps to get going. Thank you all for joining us today. Did want to pause for a moment, see if there are any questions. I think we might have a couple minutes to help answer if we have any live questions. We do not have any questions at this time. All right. Thank you all for joining. We do have sessions throughout the rest of today. Um, so check our fair schedule and see if there's any other sessions in that interest you. Um, we hope to see you later today. Thank you. Bye.